Topical minoxidil, also known as Rogaine, is one of the most common treatments for male pattern hair loss. And although topical minoxidil might not be as effective compared to the heavy hitters of the hair loss game, like the oral minoxidils, the dutasterides, and the finasterides of the world, there is a reason why topical minoxidil is so damn popular, and why it's the only FDA-approved treatment for hair loss that does not require a prescription. And that is because topical minoxidil is not only effective, but it's got a superb safety profile that the other drugs just can't compete with. So in this video, we'll be breaking down everything you should know about topical minoxidil, including its history, how it works, how effective it is, common side effects, and why topical minoxidil might work for some people, but not others. And for those of you who don't know who I am, my name's Isaac, Doctor of Pharmacy, and this channel is here to bring you the most factual, no-nonsense drug information on the internet. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Minoxidil was originally developed as an oral tablet for treating severe high blood pressure. But during treatment, doctors noticed that patients experienced hair growth as a side effect. However, due to the rare but deadly heart-related side effects seen with oral minoxidil, drug developers created a safer topical version that could be applied to the scalp to promote hair growth, but which didn't enter the bloodstream and cause those nasty heart-related side effects. This was a revelation in the hair loss world as topical minoxidil became the first FDA approved hair loss treatment that actually worked. But how exactly does minoxidil work? And just like a lot of other drugs, we don't know exactly how minoxidil works, but we do know a few key things. Firstly, we know that minoxidil is a prodrug, which means that minoxidil itself is not active, but it's converted to the active version, minoxidil sulfate, by the sulfonotransferase enzyme. And unfortunately, different people have different amounts of this enzyme, leading to minoxidil responders who have this enzyme and are able to effectively create the active version of minoxidil and do get a response from topical minoxidil and minoxidil non-responders who do not have this enzyme and therefore do not see any benefits from topical minoxidil. And these two populations are split down the middle about 50-50. In order to know if you are a minoxidil responder, there are experiments you can do. However, these do require specialized research equipment. And for most people, the only way to know is to give it a trial. The results from topical minoxidil typically start at four months and peak at 12 months. So four to 12 months would be a reasonable time frame to see whether or not you are a responder to topical minoxidil. Now, when it comes to the mechanism of action of topical minoxidil, we also know that minoxidil sulfate is a vasodilator, which works works by opening up blood vessels and may increase blood flow to the hair follicle. And we also know that minoxidil sulfate lengthens the antigen growth phase of the hair cycle while shortening the telogen resting phase. This leads to hair shedding at the start of treatment as hairs in the telogen resting phase fall out to make way for hairs to enter into the antigen growth phase. And the initial hair shed typically is temporary. It just lasts a few months, but it can be a disturbing side effect for a lot of people. Now, minoxidil has a few other key proposed mechanisms, but these are very complicated and they are beyond the scope of this video. So now that we've covered how minoxidil works, let's talk about how effective topical minoxidil is for treating hair loss. And just like other FDA approved drugs, the efficacy of topical minoxidil has been proven in large clinical trials. One big study of these clinical trials, which is known as a meta-analysis, and it is a, a very high level of evidence, found that when minoxidil was used in androgenic alopecia, which is the type of hair loss that most men and women experience, first of all, the researchers found that minoxidil in all strengths was better than placebo, which means that using any form of minoxidil is better than doing nothing. Researchers also found that minoxidil solution at the 2% strength caused an increase of 8.11 hairs per square centimeter versus placebo. They found that the solution at the 5% strength caused an increase of 14.9% hairs per square centimeter. And they found that minoxidil 2% solution in women caused an increase of 12.41 hairs per square centimeter versus placebo. Other clinical trials have also found that minoxidil 5% solution led to better and faster results compared to minoxidil 2% solution in men. However, they did find that minoxidil 5% solution caused significantly more side effects in women compared to the 2% solution. These side effects included hypertrichosis, which is excessive hair growth, including beard and body hair, as well as headaches and skin irritation. 
Researchers also found that the 5% foam was equally as effective as the 5% solution with fewer side effects in men and in women. Researchers found that once daily application of the 5% foam was equally as effective as twice daily application of the 2% solution with fewer side effects. So now that we know that topical minoxidil is generally effective, let's talk about how long topical minoxidil works for. And first of all, just like all other hair loss drugs, topical minoxidil does need to be used indefinitely to maintain its efficacy. When it comes to long-term efficacy, one study of 31 participants found that the max hair growth from topical minoxidil was achieved at one year with hair counts that decreased slowly but continue to stay significantly above baseline over a period of five years. Now, when it came to non-responders, there were a few different workarounds that were studied. One study by McCoy and colleagues found that an ultra high dose 15% minoxidil solution was able to achieve efficacy in 60% of female minoxidil non-responders without any cardiovascular side effects, suggesting that perhaps a stronger dose of minoxidil could overcome a lack of the sulfonotransferase enzyme. Another retrospective, which is a lower quality study in 44 patients, found that a 10% minoxidil sulfate solution, so in this case, we're talking about using the active version of minoxidil, they were able to achieve an efficacy in 97% of minoxidil non-responders when applied once daily. And I just wanna note here that there is a reason why we don't use the active version of minoxidil, minoxidil sulfate, and that's because, first of all, it's a lot less stable, which means it'll expire a lot quicker, and second of all, minoxidil sulfate is a larger molecule than regular minoxidil, and it's going to have a harder time penetrating into the scalp. However, these researchers did find that the active version of minoxidil was in fact effective. Lastly, there was one other study that found that applying tretinoin 0.1% cream to the scalp was able to convert 43% of non-responders into responders by upregulating the sulfonotransferase enzymes. So these could be some avenues to explore with your provider. If topical minoxidil by itself is not doing the trick, you would just need to have these versions of minoxidil uh, compounded for you. So now that we've talked about how effective minoxidil is, let's talk about how minoxidil is used. So typically for men, it's gonna be one milliliter of minoxidil 2% or 5% solution, or you could also use a half cap full of the 5% minoxidil foam, but you should be applying minoxidil twice daily. When it comes to women, you can either use one milliliter of 2% minoxidil solution twice daily, or you could use one half cap full of the 5% minoxidil foam. Now, between the solution and the foam, I typically recommend the foam as the solution contains an ingredient called propylene glycol, which helps the minoxidil to penetrate into the scalp. And this ingredient can unfortunately be very irritating. The solution also tends to give a greasy appearance. And for women, the solution is less convenient as it does need to be applied twice daily. However, the solution is often cheaper and it can be easier to apply for people with longer hair as it does come with a dropper. Now, after applying topical minoxidil, you do need to let it absorb into the scalp, so make sure to wait at least four hours before washing or wetting your hair. Now that we've talked about how to use minoxidil, let's talk about side effects. As I've mentioned, the propylene glycol found in the liquid version of minoxidil is known to cause itchiness, redness, and burning, and this issue can simply be avoided by using the foam version instead. Now, very rarely, a patient can be allergic to minoxidil itself. This could present as a rash, facial swelling, or difficulty breathing. In this case, you should discontinue minoxidil and seek medical attention. A common side effect is hypertrichosis or thickening of body and facial hair. And while this isn't so much of an issue for men, it can be distressing for women, especially women who have PCOS and are prone to growing thick body and facial hair should monitor for these side effects and should absolutely stay away from the 5% minoxidil solution. In most cases, fortunately, excessive hair growth is reversible when minoxidil is stopped. Minoxidil may also cause or worsen seborrheic dermatitis, which is a, a form of severe dandruff. And as mentioned, minoxidil can cause a temporary shedding phase at the start of treatment. And this tends to improve after the first few months. Now, when it comes to body or systemic side effects, only 1% of minoxidil is absorbed from the scalp into the bloodstream. 
At regular doses, this should not be enough to lead to any significant uh, systemic side effects. However, if your scalp uh, skin barrier is compromised, for example, if you have cuts or a skin condition, or if minoxidil is being applied excessively or at higher than recommended doses, systemic side effects can be experienced. And these typically include dizziness, heart palpitations, low blood pressure, fatigue, and swelling of the ankles. If you experience these types of side effects, uh, the minoxidil should be stopped immediately and you should seek medical attention. Lastly, I'll mention again, topical minoxidil does need to be used indefinitely to maintain its efficacy. If topical minoxidil is discontinued, significant hair shedding does occur after three to four months. Anyways, that's all I have to talk to you about when it comes to topical minoxidil. Have you personally tried topical minoxidil? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your experience. Anyways, thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.